I've heard some say that we don't see many young families in our churches today. We don't see it quite as often. Well, the reason I believe that is we don't see a mom, a dad, and the kids is because there aren't as many families like that anymore. There aren't as many mom and dad and kids as there used to be. Matter of fact, I was looking at some statistics and 18% of U.S. households today are a married couple and children. At just 18%. Back in the 1970s, that was up over 40%. So we've seen a big change, haven't we, over the years. That traditional mom and dad and kids aren't here to attend. And it's a different landscape that we're ministering to out here today. Our society simply doesn't encourage people to stay together and take care of the kids anymore, do they? They simply don't. It's no wonder that our Baptist forefathers chose back in 1998 to put together this article, Article 18 of the Baptist Faith and Message, which is called The Family. But they saw that the American culture and the world, for that matter, was on a rapid race to rejecting God's view of what the family is. They saw they needed to define it. They saw they needed to show what God's Word said about it because other people were taking what God's Word said and twisting it and making it say other things. Not much different than it is today, probably more so now, right? Twisting it and turning it. Um, they were rejecting God's view of the family. And, and family, the issue here is family is the building block of every society. You understand that, don't you? Where the family goes is where the society is going. That's what holds it all together. Uh, so tonight we're going to look at... Uh, our church beliefs on the family as the foundation. And this is what the Baptist Faith and Message in Article 18 says. It says, God has ordained the family as the foundational institution of human society. It's pretty big words, isn't it? It goes on to say it's composed of persons related to one another uh, by marriage, blood, or adoption. I talked about that a little bit last time. Uh, but... Um, the Bible teaches us uh, this idea about the family, about being, being the foundational institution. Now, there are like three different institutions that you see in the Bible that God started. One of them is, you're sitting in it uh, as a group here tonight, the church. The church was started in the New Testament by Jesus Christ himself. It is an institution. Uh, people come together uh, through it. Uh, the government as well. Did you know God created government? Uh, he created a much better government. Most people's human governments go all to pieces. But God created government. He did that back during the time of Noah, didn't he? When he set up the fact that, uh, that uh, the governments could, could take account in the world and they could uh, actually uh, kill those who had done wrong, you know, who had murdered. And so all that is bound up when Noah got off the ark. But before all those things occurred, before any of those things happened, there was the family God created. And he created that with Adam and Eve, didn't he? Uh, family is foundational. All of society builds from it. Uh, and modern government, they would really like to get their hands into the family. You know what I'm saying? They really would. Hillary Clinton, she wrote a book that was called uh, It Takes a Village. And it come off from that old uh, saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, her village was her, the government, right? They were going to raise up that child in the way that it ought to be. Uh, whoever controls the understanding of the youth, you understand, will determine the outcome of what society is, right? The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. You ever heard that? There's a lot of truth in it, ain't there? There's a lot of truth in that. Um, so from the beginning, God has used the family as the primary classroom and the primary object lesson. What do we say we are, church? We're the family of God, right? Who are we following? Father, God, right? So we have that aspect of family between us, right? God uses that as an object lesson, but he also uses it inside of your homes, inside of within your families. And that's what's wrong with society today because families aren't doing what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to train up their children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. The mom, the dad together 
working together to raise that child up in a Christian family. You see, they're, they pretty much wiped out family all the way around out here today. And more, more so, more sadly, I guess, is the idea of a Christian family. A lot of us probably weren't raised in a Christian family. You're blessed if you were raised in a Christian family. You truly are. It was a great blessing of God that, that your mom and dad chose to follow Jesus Christ and raise you up in a Christian family. What is a Christian family? The Christian family goes to church together. They go to church, but it ain't just going to church together. Oh, you could go to the movies together too, couldn't you? That's the, I mean, it ain't just going to church together. The Christian family prays together, don't they? They get down on their hands and knees together and pray. They teach that little child. I remember being taught just as a little boy to get down beside my bed, fold my hands up, and say uh, my little prayer before I went to bed each night, right? And I was taught that from a very early age, and it was surprising to me when I got older that other kids weren't taught this as well. You see, you're blessed to be in a Christian family. Another thing that a Christian family does, it says right back there in our church covenant, they have family devotions together. They sit down and they study over the Word of God, not just in the Sunday school, not just uh, out here on Sunday. My goodness, if this is all the study of the Word of God you get, you are starving to death, can I tell you? You're starving to death. I mean, I'm trying to provide a good meal, but you can't eat on all, just what I'm providing for an hour or two during the week, Okay. You're not going to be able to eat on that. You've got to go home and you've got to study it, but not just you. You've got to teach it to your children. The father is a priest in this area. He is a spiritual leader. The mother nurtures her children with God's love. All of these things is what creates a Christian family. And there's a lot of churches that are filled with families, but they're not necessarily Christian, okay? A Christian family. God repeated this idea about it being a foundational point of society, not just to the church, but also to Israel. If you go to Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9, it says this, and this is a, uh, they would repeat this over and over again, Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And they knew that. They, back then they would uh, actually memorize the first five books of Moses. The little kids would do this, studying over the word of God. Listen to what it tells them to do. This is what they were commanded to do as they were going into the promised land with their children. It says, Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. That's toughly. It's hard to sit down and have a family altar. Can I tell you that? It's difficult to sit down and study over the Word of God. There'll be something come up. It'll be late and you don't want to go on to bed. There'll be all these different things and sometimes you do miss it. But you need to have it, you understand? Within your family. Teach them diligently. And it's not just that, that family altar where you sit down and study the Word of God. It's how you live your life in front of your family. It says here, Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So when you get up in the morning, thank God, that's what they hear out of mom and daddy's mouth. When they go to bed in the evening, thank God, he's given us another day, right? As they're going throughout the day and they go out and work in the field, well, look, God gave us a, a good day to work. Little things, little things like that. Prayers that they hear you talking about, talking about how Jesus is in your life. Man, if you don't do that, they'll not know Jesus is in your life. They'll think you just go to church on Sunday and that's all there is to it. Friends, it is a blessing to be able to have a Christian family. It says, Thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house, upon thy gates. Uh, before that, it said, Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. They shall be as frontless between thy eyes. Hang up pictures of the Word of God in your house. I do that. Stories of the Word of God in your house. To remind you as you're walking around what reality truly is and what's important. All of these things. Now, as I was saying, there's this non-concern today to raise children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. It's like there's just no concern in it whatsoever. And, and the scripture told the Israelites so long ago, there'll be repercussions for that. You understand? 
everything you do, there is an effect that comes from it. Do you understand that? If you don't do this, something will happen. If you do this, something else will happen. If you do not do what the Scripture says, there will be something to occur. And it happened to the Israelites. In Psalm 78, verses 5 through 8, it talks about what happened because not everybody sat down and studied over the Word of God with their children. Not everybody passed on the truth of who God was. For he established a testimony in Jacob, that's in Israel, and appointed a law in Israel, when he, he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, right? What was he supposed to make known? He was supposed to tell them, The Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Right? They were supposed to do that. The fathers were supposed to do that. The mothers were supposed to back that up. That the generation to come might know them. Simple enough, isn't it? Even the children which should be born. There's going to be kids that come from you that you'll never know. But they might know about good old granny that sat down with the Bible. I know about good old granny that sat down with the Bible, though I never met her so long ago, right? They'll know about that. That they might, why? This is the key. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. This is huge. You understand how huge it is? I wish it was made such more importance to people that they pass this on to their children. You understand? This is huge. This is why society is a mess out here. Why? Because people have done um, what the Israelites did. So here's the next part of the verse. They might, that they might not be as their fathers. Who are the, those are the fathers who were stubborn and a rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. You know what happens? You get one family here and they get uh, in the church halfway, right? And then the next generation, what? They might come on Easter and Christmas. And you know what happens to the next generation? Who's God? You mean Jesus is God? They don't even know that. Right? And that's what happens. And it matters what you do. Grandparents. It matters what you do. Parents. It matters what we do. It's a huge responsibility that God has given to us. Do you know the one command in the New Testament for marriages and how we do our dealings with other people? It's really very simple. I speak this to every young couple I counsel before they get married. Be not unequally yoked. Together. Why? Why would that matter to be unequally yoked? Lightness with dark, dark with light. Let's read the scripture of it. It says in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 14 through 18, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, like the devil? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, an unbeliever. And what agreement hath the temple of God with the idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Do you hear that? Ye who have received Jesus Christ as Savior are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And what will it be? Well, there's that, uh, that story of a family. It will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Why does God tell us to make certain that Christians marry other Christians and not marry unbelievers? Why does He do that? Because foundations are important, right? Right? You know what a yolk is? You probably thought that was something when you crack an egg and there's the yolk or something, right? No. A yolk is something that they put on oxen. And the ox, uh, say one's a big strong live ox, right? And they put the yoke on him. Well, then they bring over a, a Don Knotts looking ox, right? A little skinny ox. It, it can't get nowhere. Now that big old strong ox, he's going to do fine. But he's going to take all the weight, right? The old Don Knott ox over here, he's going to be falling off to the side, right? He's not got much strength. And what's he going to do? He's going to pull him down in the ditch, right? Even though he's super strong, eventually it's going to pull him down the ditch because he yoked... 
with something that wasn't as strong as he was. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It'll pull the family down. If you're yoked with a lost person, how will that affect your children? That's the load you're carrying, right? They're going down the ditch with you, aren't they? Paul Harvey used to have a dialogue. He used to have a dialogue. He would say, uh, if I were the devil, and he would have this long this list of things, if I were the devil, I'd do this, this, and this to destroy America. If I were the devil. You know what the devil would do to destroy the society? He'd take the feet out, right? He'd take out the foundation. He'd take out the family, wouldn't he? That's where he's going to attack. Make no mistake. That's where he's going to attack. Our Baptist forefathers foresaw this coming on a huge scale back in 1998. And they made the resolution in their minds and hearts to hold up the importance of the family to our children. That they would walk in the truth. You say, well, my family's messed up. They've got all these issues, all these different things going on. Right now, I'm already unequally yoked. My goodness, we've, there was a divorce happening, and I don't, we don't have that family anymore. We lost my wife. We lost my child. We lost uh, uh, the husband. We lost all these things. Well, God is a God that is always there, isn't he, to start new. He's the God of new beginnings, isn't he, right? And I promise you, if you will center your family on God, God will line everything else back up, won't he? He will. He will. i got some people here probably shout and tell me, yeah? If you line your will up with God's will, he'll take care of all the rest, okay? We have to be like Joshua when they were going into that promised land. He asked them what they were going to do. And what did he say? He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't know what y'all going to do, but as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord, right? And that is where we need to make our stand. I hope you're enjoying the sermons here and have subscribed to my channel on YouTube. But I would love even more to meet with you in person at the church where I'm blessed to pastor at in White Pine, Tennessee, Omega Baptist Church. We are a Bible-believing church called to love all people without bias by proclaiming and teaching the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are located directly off of Exit 4 off of Interstate 81 in Tennessee. You can see us clearly from the interstate. We have worship each Sunday at 1030 and I hope you'll make plans to join us. It's all about Jesus, my friend, and we pray that we may be able to have the opportunity to share with you personally the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ.